The swing look good. I can't tell if you're trying to hustle me or not. I play golf when I'm on tour every day. It's like therapy for you. I love these, by the way. Jesus. You want to like tease it here or something? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm trying to settle here. Oh, can we get him? Can we get? Can we get me a microphone? <laughs> no, no, no. Low hands, that's a different down I do. Low hands, <laughs> cause I want you back. What? We're gonna have to reshoot the music video. But I want you to admit that that was the the point of that song. Cause that's what makes it. Is that what you want me to say? Yes. He's like, nice to meet you. That's about a dude that can't shoot low rounds consistently. <laughs> that one I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Range Talk season two. We back, baby. Y'all probably wondering, well, how could you kick it off any better than last year? I mean, we did half step, but I delivered, like I always do. Today, we have a superstar in every sense of the word. Former One Direction member, the newest judge on The Voice, the homie Nile Horn. Y'all probably like, what do we know about golf? Shut up. Watch the episode. Not only do we know a lot about golf, which we're gonna talk about, we're also gonna talk about music, but we also gonna see if I can get a record deal out of this. Y'all stay tuned, it's a good one. Oh my God. Well, hello, Look sir. Look at my guy right here. How, How you doing, up, baby? Nice to see you. Oh, this is- You all good? This is beautiful, dog. Thanks for having me. You know, uh, famous person to famous person, it's important that we stick together and show yeah, up and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. this. 100%, man, that's what we do. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to acknowledge me like that. that not, I mean, my stock price just went up. It just went up. Thanks for having me. No, this is, this is a very important, you know, time in golf. It's an important part of the year for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, have you here right now dressed as fly as you are. Thank you. I mean, this is probably top three shirts that I've had on this show. Thank you very much. Yeah. Really, top three? I'm a Nike guy, but that's that's a beautiful. I'll that's take it, man. That's if you're a Nike shirt. guy, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but look, man, I got to ask you. Superstardom, superstardom. I mean, you were, you a were superstar, dog. Am I? <laughs> did you? No, you, you are. You are. Don't be <laughs> humble with me right now. But did you always know that this was part of the plan? Like, did you, like, you know, at the at the age of like three or five, were you just walking around the house like I am him? I'm about to do him <laughs> I, stuff. I don't, I don't know. I think I was more annoying than I was <laughs> do, doing that. I, yeah. I definitely knew that it's all I wanted to do. Like, I, I just, I had no interest. Don't listen to this, kids. <laughs> I had no interest in school, or it was only really the extracurricular music stuff that I was always into. I, yeah, I just had a real passion for music very early. How did you discover the, the passion for it, though? I mean, <clears throat> was it just like you watching? Are you getting inspiration from somewhere? You start singing, and you're like, oh man, I really do like the sound of my voice. This is crazy. <laughs> like, what was the process? Yeah, I guess my my both of my parents are big music fans, and I was brought up listening to a lot of stuff. They had vinyl in the house. And things like that, and then I would like uh, join. I joined like the choir at school, and yeah, would like yeah. sing at Christmas things. Okay. And then a couple of the choir teachers were telling me I was pretty decent, so I kind of took the confidence from there, I guess. The choir teachers got you. Yeah. <laughs> you know you got it. My choir teachers never loved me. <laughs> but look, I so, you so obviously, you know, the One Direction thing. I mean, big part of your career. Yeah. Talk to me about that whole transition of going from, you know, I, I assume that you were trying to do your own thing, mm. coming together with those group of guys mm -hmm. and just kind of stepping up and killing stuff. Yep. How did that, you know, how was that process for you? It was obviously wild at the time. I was 16. I was on the biggest TV show in, in the country at the time. And I just kind of, you're going for those things not knowing ever what's going to happen. Exactly. Um, and that turned out to be the case because I went in by myself and came out in a group so right. um, then it was just kind of like seeing what happens because you don't know you don't know what the you don't know how long it's going to last so you're just there just having fun at 16 17 so you but you went into it not knowing how long it, there was no parts of you that was like this is a forever thing yeah. I found my I found my crew of soulmates these are my people <laughs> this is my tribe yeah. we're gonna ride off in the sunset together no no yeah, for sure we were like gonna give this a go at the time, we didn't even know each other when we first got together, you know? Yeah. Um, so it was, you were kind of fingers crossed that everyone was going to get along and it was going to become that. Right. Um, thankfully, it worked. It worked. Um, and everyone got on very well and the rest is uh, history, if you like. <laughs> you know, even though you're younger than me, you're a big inspiration. And, and one thing, you know, as I work on becoming more famous, through chasing clout, interviewing people <laughs> like you, I want to know, like, what was it 
that made you hyper aware of just how famous you were? Cause you big dog, y'all big. <laughs> I mean, y'all top top boy bands in history. Do you agree with that? Uh, in history? Statistically, yeah, I'll, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, okay I'll take it, yeah. I, why, How do I get all of the, 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 the cockiness out of you? I'm not gonna get that today. <laughs> Don't think so, brother. Ah, uh, okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. But what, tell me a, a defining moment where you realize like, yo, I, I'm a really big deal. Like this is something that happened that just made you hyper aware of that? I think it was coming to America the first time. Uh -huh. um, America's like the, the dream when, for any of us. Um, get here, and then we went, we released the first album, and I remember being in New York when it went number one. And there was like thousands of kids outside the hotel, shutting down the streets. <laughs> we were on the Today Show, shutting down the plaza. That kind of thing was when I was like, all right, maybe. Uh, <laughs> maybe there's something going on here. But then you, again, you have to back it up. Yeah. You know, the first one's good. You have to yep. make sure the second one is as good. Yep. And then it was kind of a momentum thing, you know, yeah. following the momentum and, and keeping your fingers crossed and just enjoying it for what it was because it was, it was so much fun. Like, we, we were just having a riot. We, we were, were like you couldn't miss, bro. Yeah, we, we were kind of in our little bubble, you know? Yeah. There's us and then there's you know, in the hotel and just having a laugh, being 17, being on the road. Right. You know, it's not something that everyone gets to do, so we were just enjoying it for that. It's crazy to think about, and you know, in those years, you got to experience the genesis all the way to like the end of like this, this great thing. Yeah. What did you learn as far as how you process separating from things or like how you, like what, what did that experience teach you about you know relationships and, and how they rise and fall and I think, uh, come I think together grow apart having that much going on in your life so young probably matures you quicker than your average person of that age yeah you know people go through college people you know i didn't even graduate high school you know it was that's like, crazy when you think about it like that it's nuts um definitely matured me quicker than i would have thought I'm still, a, I'm still a weirdo, but... Uh, <laughs> you said what? I'm still a bit of a lunatic, but it definitely matured me in certain ways, like life stuff, life skills, like yeah. fending for yourself, that kind of thing. Um, do, do you yeah. roll anything out of that experience with those guys into how you process relationships today? Uh, it's very different, isn't it? Like, dip, you've got different relationships with family, different yeah. relationships with friends, with colleagues, with, you know, girlfriends or whatever. Yeah. They're, they are kind of different, but I think they're kind of, yeah, probably a bit, bit more patient than I would, probably would have been. Mm -hmm. Patience is a big thing. Um, yeah, just the level of maturity you get from something like that would, would help in kind of all, all walks of life, I'd imagine. Made you a better person. Well, I don't know, yeah, I hope so. If you're here with me, it made you a pretty good yeah. person. <laughs> so look, you step away from one direction, and then... You choose two directions, it seems, right? You start <laughs> focusing on the solo career. Yep. You start a golf agency. Yep. Tell me about, first of all, take me to the genesis of you in golf. When, oh, did, when, did, when did the love start? Because I'm looking at your swing. You say that the knee busted up a little yeah, bit, but the swing look, the, knees the, swing look the swing look good. <laughs> I can't tell if you're trying to hustle me or not. <laughs> I'm just trying to pull up a, a compression sock. OK. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think being Irish, there comes, comes a thing it's a it's a an everyday sport in Ireland. Everyone's playing it. Yep. And I think I got to like six or seven, and my grandmother used to live next to like a tiny little public pitch and pitch and putt course. Right. And I would just go under the barbed wire fence with a wedge and a putter, and that's you where was I, grabbing barbed wire like that. Literally, yeah, in in the gaps, you know. You were seven. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then we started playing like that. And then when I was about when I was just when I was going into high school. I, yeah, two of my, me and two of my friends, we joined our local golf club. It was cheap to join. Yep. And every day during the summer, that's all it was. It was 36 holes a day, competitions Tuesday, Thursday. And to be fair, at the time, it was so easy to get into golf. Like, we had Tiger at yeah, the top yeah, of his game. Yeah. You know, I was born in 93, so 2003, he was at. Bro. That was when he was. Big dog. He was, <laughs> that's when dog. he was at his best, winning yeah, yeah. absolutely everything. So. You're coming home from the golf course, you're sitting down watching TV and Tiger's hole and putts to win tournaments most weeks. Yep. It's very easy to get into a sport. It's like getting into soccer now. You watch Ronaldo and Messi, it's very, it's very easy. Right. You know? So you'll be wearing that Sunday red on the yeah, golf course man. thinking you're Tiger. You know, did you ever wear the Sunday red? 
Yeah, never worked for me as, like it did for him. I, thought, I always thought that I was embarrassing him a little bit. You know what I mean? It was like my swing don't look that pretty. It just never really did me justice when I put it on. So I just kind of <laughs> left that his thing on the inspiration side. Stay away from it. Just stayed away. <laughs> but look, so, and then, you know, obviously, fast forward that to now, like, you know, obviously you kept the relationship with golf pretty close. Yeah. What is kind of the driving force with how active you want to be in the sport now? Like, what do you love so much about the game that made you, you know, stand up a, a whole operation around it? I, th I think golf, going back to what we were speaking about earlier, I think golf has got a lot to say for that too, because it's, it gives me maturity levels that I wouldn't have had before. Some of the, the old school ethics in golf. Woo, look at that. I like the way your voice, the inflection Ooh. went up. When I, yeah, yeah, that was cute. I like that. That was cute. That was cute. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think golf did the same for me. Kind of like that maturity that you, you know, being a, being a grown up inside the gates of a golf club, I find is was quite cool. You know, right. um, some of those things. But just the love I have for it now. It's a sport that I can easily get away from the madness. Yeah. You know, you get in behind the gates of a golf, a golf course, and you just. Stick your phone in your bag. I feel, I feel like it's the biggest cliche ever. I feel like every person you interview will say the same thing. You can stick your phone in your bag. You're locked away for three or four hours, um, away from all of whatever else is going on in your life. Yeah. And you can just concentrate on this because. <laughs> well, well, no. Some people that I interview are just like degenerate gamblers, and they just use this as a way to, you know, make side money and stuff like that. But, I I'm mean, not, that I'm is, not a hustler. I can't yeah, do that. <laughs> that, is, that is a prevailing answer, I guess. Getting away from things. Yeah. But I mean, but outside of you just enjoying it for personal reasons, yeah. it seems that you have a, you know, an agenda to make the game accessible and, and better for everybody, for yeah. kids, for women, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Where does that passion come from? I just feel like this, the sport's just got this stigma yeah. um, through its own fault. I feel like golf has always been very good at speaking to itself. It's always been like, I can sell this golf club to you because you like golf. Yeah. You know, or I could sell this shirt to you because you're into the game. Yeah. And it's about making it more accessible to absolutely everybody. You know, it's it's got like it's got a stigma where it's an old man's game, it's an expensive sport, it's got all of this, and some of that is true. But it's about kind of changing that narrative and and getting more young people into it, women, people with disability, you name it. Yeah. Making it as diverse as we possibly can. Um, and I feel like at this, this day and age, we can do it. You know, with the way social media is, things like we're doing right now, things like you're doing on a regular basis, I think people like... <laughs> a compliment. <laughs> oh. you, you took it well. <laughs> um, I, feel like, I feel like we're all, you might feel sometimes that you're, you're just doing a little bit, but it takes time to do this it stuff. Does. And we're gonna get there, I think. Man, but, and, and that brings me up to the point about you partnering with the RNA, bro. Yeah. That's huge. They working with your whole, like your agency as a whole is working with the <laughs> RNA to, yeah. what, t talk to me about the programs that you guys are going to start. Yeah, doing. it was kind of, you need the governing bodies of golf to get in touch. You know, to, you need those guys on site of whatever you want to do. So when I got the call from the RNA, I was all in. Right. Um, I wanted to hear what they had to say and they just taken on a new marketing director and um, and they really wanted to kind of do this. They were on the same page as me. They wanted to change games, come up with programs and really put their their money where their mouth is. Right. And I feel like they're doing that. You know, we're going to we're going to start some like some programs where we can get like younger people into it, ladies into it, people who have never tried the game. Kind of like if you were going to the gym. Yeah. And you're scared to go to a class because you're afraid of how you might look in the class or whatever, because there's some guy over there hench like you, you know? <laughs> Bro, this is all just water and tight shirts in case y'all haven't realized that by now. Just... You know, and the golf's the same though. You turn up to a driving range or you turn up to a golf course and you're like, is it? <laughs> people don't want to see themselves looking stupid. So we're trying to, you know, figure out, you know, by surveying thousands and thousands of people around the world and all the different federations, what is keeping people away from golf? What could get them into it? What right. types of people they would play with it? Would they play with their family? Would they play with, people they've never met, would they play with their friends? Um, and just finding out through survey what's making people take it when it comes to playing golf. And I think that's where we'll be able to decide on what exact programs we're gonna put out there to make sure we can get in. It's obviously like, there's so many like great things about golf, like health, yep. mental health. Yep. 
it's a proven fact that if you play golf, you'll, you, you'll be able to live longer, apparently. Um, I don't know how true that is, because... I've struggled on the golf course sometimes. How, how, you just, how you just leave with saying it's a proven fact and then say you don't know how true it is? Well, it's a, they say it's a proven fact, but I'm not a scientist and I can't have a conversation with them. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You, you give me a fact and then a disclaimer after a fact. I've never heard that before. Hey, but you know, it's I fake do news. Want, <laughs> I do just I do just want to throw my uh, my bid in there, dog. Like uh, I know that you probably need some support doing that stuff, and uh, yep. I've done a little bit of research and I've done some speculative extrapolations on how much money I think you have. If you want to hire me <laughs> to be a part of that team, I gave your people my resume. All, all right, man, no worries at all. I'm I'll saying. be in touch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, but, but honestly, like, you're doing all, you're doing that s stuff yourself, you know? I can, you know, I've got followers and young girls that follow me, and if I can get like, you know, just say, let's say like on Twitter, it's like 40 million or something. If I can get a percent, yeah. I always say this, it's, but it's true. If I can get like a couple of percent of those, a couple of percent of 40 million is a lot of people. That's a lot of people. You don't people. have to be a mathematician to figure that one out. Um, I'm not going to even take a stab at that. <laughs> but it's either. a lot though, it's a big number. That's why I don't have the answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it's like we could, you know, that's a good way of getting them in. Can't, you know, we're not going to do it all, but we can do little bits to try and change things. Yeah. You know, the way we're doing it. Let's talk, let's transition, talk about music real quick, dog. Yep. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but I am actually a Nylhorn fan. Right, okay. I'm saying, I mean, and since you went out on your own, you done put out some bangers. All right, thank you. you I'm for real, you, you agree, right? You love the music you're putting out. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. What's your favorite song you got out, I mean, right now? I know you got some new stuff coming, but. Yeah, I got some new stuff coming. Yeah, let's it's not talk about it. probably be out that. when this comes out, I'd imagine. Yeah. Let, let, you you want to like tease it here or something? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I'm trying to sell it here. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I thought you loved me. <laughs> no. Anyway, but no. What's your what's your what's your favorite solo project that you got out right now? Uh, probably my first album. Um, felt like coming off the back of the band, it was important for me to like sit down and write the songs that I would naturally write. Like oh, when so I pick up when I pick you. up yeah. yeah when I pick up a guitar, how I would naturally write them. Yep. Um, and that's where a lot of the folky type stuff, singer songwriter stuff, comes from because that's what I. When I pick up a guitar, I naturally just play that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so probably the first album, yeah, Slow Hands and, and all that kind of thing, yeah. Slow Hands. <laughs> Bro, I got this theory though, dog. I'm just I'm wondering if you're gonna come clean with me about it. A lot of your songs I listen to, they sound like love songs, but they kind of sound like golf love songs. <laughs> Everybody says that. Everybody say that? Yep. So I'm not the first person. No, no. So are you confessing to this? No. There's no, there's no confession to be had. There's that's no an, truth that's to an that. assumption. Bro, you made a song called Slow Hands. Yeah. Like, I felt when I pick up a paradigm and I just smoke one with a little baby fade, yeah. that's what the paradigm sing back to me. Does it? Yeah. It needs speed, bro. It's a, it's a romance song about a driver seducing a golfer, bro. <laughs> You've never thought about that. By the way, that's the best thing about songwriting. You can, you can turn it into something in your life. But I want you to admit that that was the, the point of that song. Cause that's what makes it. Is mean that what you want me to say? Yes. Yeah. For the purpose of the interview, yes. Matter of fact, I had this. I had this theory that if you added ad libs to slow to to slow hands, yeah. you would actually feel that metaphor come to life a bit more. Right. Go on. You wanna you wanna just like just kick, just kick the song off for me. I just wanna try something. Slow hands. That's a different down. I do it no, no, no. Matter of fact, take it from the top. What's the first? We one? should take this back to my place. We should take it to my place. What's up? Yeah, so she said right to my face. I know what you want, shut up. <laughs> Cause I want you back. We're gonna have to reshoot the music video. I'm just saying, bro, this is, this is, that's what I heard. Fingertips putting on the show. Bro, this my. All right. I see what you're talking about But now. just tell me that that's not. That maybe maybe the, the, the background of the song has changed now. The story of the song has changed. The We're same. gonna have to reshoot the video. Come on, baby. Like, nice to meet you. That's about a dude that can't shoot low rounds consistently. <laughs> he, shoot a, he, he, shoot right. a, he shoot a low that round. One I, that one I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Oh, dude. But I'm just saying. So, like, so, so talk to me about some of the new stuff you got coming up. Yeah. I've been working on this album for a while. I kind of, during the pandemic, I went quiet. I was just doing what everyone else was doing, sitting in the house, waiting for something to happen. And the whole world was getting real creative. If you remember, like that first six months of bro, that's that's how I got famous. There you go. Yeah, 
everybody sat down and tried to figure themselves out. I just tried to exploit the fact that nobody was doing stuff. Yeah. And I did there a you lot go. of stuff. Well, I did the opposite for about six months. Well, that's what famous people do. I know. Yeah, I got, I got. And then I just sat down at the piano one day and something, the, the title track of the album came out just at home. And then I was like, all right, it's time now. I was like, one, once one comes out and it was a good one. Yep. And it's now the title track of the album. I felt like, all right, it's time to get some, once the world opens up and we can fly places and we can get people in a room to make the record, I'm ready to go. And then uh, I got together with two, with a guy that I've always worked with, uh, a guy called John Ryan and another guy called Joel Little. And he was living in New Zealand at the time. So he would like fly up from New Zealand, quarantine, because New Zealand was like the last country to open up. He was like quarantined for two weeks when he got back. So he'd come to, he'd come to LA for two weeks, fly back, quarantine for two weeks. And he had like three kids at home and he was doing it for the good of the, the good cause, you know? Um, so yeah, and then we made this, I love the record. I think it's my best stuff. This your best stuff yet? <laughs> yeah, I think so. What, what, what do we have to do to the good folks here at Callaway and Range Talk? What do we have to do to get a little taste of it? Oh, no, 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 don't do tasters, Roger. What is that? Is that like bad, that bad juju or something? Like what? Huh? What is it bad? No, I, just, it, I want people to hear the real deal before I come and say, my first performance can't be on a driving range. It needs to be on a Jimmy Fallon or... I, I'm not important enough is what you're saying. The driving range is not important. <laughs> we do this inside. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take that too personal, dog. I ain't gonna take that too personal. I feel like you're coming at me. Oh no, 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 no. I thought we was bonding, and I just wanted to test the limits on it. You know what I mean? But I did. I did already sign up. I love to... these, by the way. Jesus. Oh. This is my that's... first. This is my first time. But that's a that's a nice little segue. I mean, since we can't talk about this new music relationship. <laughs> oh, all right. Talk to me about why you chose Callaway. I know everybody tripping over themselves yeah. trying to get to you. Yeah. What made sense about the Callaway relationship? I think they're the most, definitely the most progressive golf company. I mean, with the whole Top Golf thing alone. Yep. Um, I think we're we're starting to see that they're really putting their money where their mouth is when it comes to initiative, and and uh, they're a game-changing company. They've, right. they've seen a gap in the market and they've ran straight into it. Right. Um, and if everything from what all the stuff we spoke about with the RNA, we're all quite aligned on that. And then the, the quality of the gear. I mean, Bro. some of the, the best players on the planet are playing. Um, so I'm not going to lie to you right now. Both. I'm a little bit hungover, but I'm striping the ball. And I just don't think that there's another bag of uh, equipment company that would allow me to do this See? with the level that I'm functioning at. You're if you're hungover, buy Callaway. <laughs> 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 Not the only reason, but I'm just saying, it's, it's a good reason. Yeah, it's a it's good, good reason. So look, I don't let people leave this show without trying to take advantage of their generosity in some capacity. So this is what I propose to you. Yes, sir. Me and you, we do a little competition. I know that you are a supporter of Drive, Chip, and Putt. Yep, love the Drive, Chip, and Putt. Love the Drive, Chip, and Love putt. it. How do you feel about a Drive, Chip, and Putt competition between you and I? Yeah. If I win, if I win, you take me to a few of your tour stops and introduce me as your best friend, and let's see how that affects my life. I take you to the tour stops. Yep. And then introduce me as you. You know, I, I, I said more after that that I would like for you to. It's all right. You just struggling. I'm struggling on this here. Oh, can we get him? Can we get? Can we get me a microphone? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> you need me to be louder or something like that. Okay. If I if I win, you bring me to bring me. You know, bring me to the. Where do you live? In Chicago. You live in Chicago. Perfect. Yeah. I love Chicago. Let's play over there. Let's we, play golf over there and then you can come to the show. That's a good day out. That's, that's I play golf when I'm on tour every day, so. It's like therapy for you. Yeah, I love it. You Get play it. you play golf while you're on tour every day? Every second or third day I try and play. That's um, beautiful. In most cities that I've been to, knowing some of the PJ Tour players that are dotted around the country, mm -hmm. you know, I can, I can thankfully reach out to some of those and see if I can get on some courses, but I've like, I've played some amazing courses because of touring. I saw, you play a lot of golf in Chicago? I played Medina. Okay. Chicago Beautiful. Golf Club. Chicago Golf, okay. Um, Them the big dogs, it. yeah. They're cool. Yeah, Medina they're, was you, sick. You check Especially after the miracle of Medina. Oh, yeah. I oh, needed yeah. to see it for myself. Oh, you know, That's they, a hell of a they, spot. They blowing that whole thing up when they finish the renovation. I start throwing your name around there. I might get an honorary membership or something. You come know on, I mean? man. So yeah, if you if you go come out there with me, that's that's yeah. that's money in the bank to me. If you got an honorary membership, you better take me. Hey, oh no, you gonna <laughs> get me the honorary membership. <laughs> but look, uh, somehow or another, your 
I'm, maybe it's your accent or something, but you talk me out of my prize for winning this competition. Anyways, what do you want if you win? That's a good question. You want Callaway to sign you to a lifetime deal? I can make that happen. This lifetime deal to Callaway. And then, um, and then we're bro, going. You gave me a tour date and around the golf, dog. You well, say, then, and then. And then you have to, we have to go out for dinner or something. You're taking me out for dinner. You pay for dinner. Go for a few drinks. Yep. And then we play. That was cute. The hangover cure. <laughs> <laughs> we play the we play the hangover sticks. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna set up this little drive chip and putt competition, All right. dog. I got a little. I don't know how good the driver's gonna be with this. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. No, let's let's set it up over here. This is my first time to hit the paradigm. Bro, it's, I'm telling you, like... I'm excited about it. It looks so good. Based on the music that you make, like, you're going to fall in love with that driving <laughs> instrument. If what I know about your music is true... Surely we... John Ram is hitting that oh, tower man. out there. Yeah. He's going I'm, over the fence. I, I, will, I will argue that. Man, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of distance for a little backswing. Yeah, crazy. It's, it's, it snaps it's, it here. I try it, and I just, you know, I feel like I'm having a seizure during my transition. Oh my God. Bro, I knew that the knee thing was a, you faking, bro. I'm, I'm all left-sided though. Get I'm a stack that, and no, tilt guy. I'm no, a, I'm no. a stack and tilt guy. I knew as soon as you walked up good, <laughs> now you over here limping and stuff. Get out of here, dog. Oh, I yeah. know a hustler when I see one. It keeps, it keeps bending on me and buckling. No, man. Ugh. But speaking of hustles though, By new, the way, hustle, the, new hustles that you got. New hustles. You, you, over, you working on, you at The Voice right now, yeah. right? Yeah. Shooting it right now as we speak. Um, it's so fun. You know, I came from a TV show like that. Yeah. So I, there's an empathy that I have to the contestants that exactly. I thought I'd be able to like put aside, but I can't. I find it so hard to like make in-game decisions about who I want to stay, who I want to go. But the talent on the show is crazy. That's tough, man, because it's like I feel that you guys have the responsibility at that juncture. Like you're literally making and breaking careers. I know. Like with a split decision like yeah. that. And it's not for like one human to say that, you know, this person has this kind of trajectory or there's room for them here, that, another. But I mean, it's like as fun as that seems, mm -hmm. I know how hard it must be like on you as a human yeah. to kind of make those decisions about people. Yeah. But you're still blessing them with the platform, though. Yeah, no, no, it's great that they get to be on one of the biggest TV shows in, in, in the world, never mind the country. Yeah. Um, but still, when you're standing there and you have to make a decision between, and the two of them are standing there, mm -hmm. and you have to go, these are the reasons. Yeah. Um, watching their faces is horrible, because I can't imagine being on the receiving end of something like that. Um, well, I mean, you were, though. Because a lot of people would leave. Well, yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> and it worked out great for you. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. <laughs> but. Um, you know, it's it's difficult because a lot of people are like a lot of these kids that come on they're it's 18, 19, and yeah. like I'm telling them no, but and, and in their heads they're thinking right that's the end. You're it's 18, go again. It's the beginning, bro. You know, you have, can't you can't think like that. So that's the only that's the only solace I've got in it. Like that I can think like that. Like just they'll be back. Would you argue that if more voice contestants play golf, they have a bit more resolve when they came out of your harsh yeah. judgment? Yeah, uh, the, the maturity be beyond their ears. I mean, maybe you just introduce a, maybe, okay, here's an idea. Maybe we just start a little, a little voice golf thing. I mean, I know you don't think, you don't like singing at the driving range or nothing like that, but how about we just do a segment where we introduce very, very talented artists to the game of golf while we critique their singing skills? That's a good idea. It's like a show concept or something. Let's do it. The voice, maybe we call it the swing. You're full of that idea. Let's go, baby. <laughs> all right, let's get to this contest, though. All right, what are we doing? No, you over here. We're going to put it there. on the quad so I get real numbers. I need to get see one of these quads. They're so cool. I know. Let me make sure. I don't know it. if I'll be able to hit it very far, but we'll see. No, 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 no. Into wind. I'm not going to judge. Just want to let the cameras know it's very much into wind. I think it's like 40 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, your shirt is so tight, it's not moving. You know what I mean? <laughs> Both of our shirts. Yeah, that's yours is for a different reason than mine, now, to be honest. I know, I know. I'm trying to just get the, trying to appeal to your fan base. Ooh. Oh, that's not good. That's a bit See, th this is the this is the rombo fade though that you're hitting right there. I hope you know that, right? I just I prefer straight. <laughs> okay, that's, you know we got a little 264 carry. That's how, how, how far you? I mean, 264 carry. That's probably gonna roll out to 280 something. Yeah, 280 something. 282, 283 is where I where I can generally get to. Carry wise, uh, probably not now. 
Oh, total. Total 280, yeah, 280. So on so one leg, you're pretty much doing what you do on a normal day. Thank you. Tell them again, one leg. <laughs> one legged, one legged. Okay, all right, that's good. I'm not, I'm not gonna make you keep bad knees. I'll step up and do my work. All right, go you go. You want, you want to oh, keep, you want to well, keep showing me that? Absolutely not. <laughs> go ahead. All right, now. Nah. All right. Roger the Dodger. My dad called me that. I'm telling you, man, me and you might be related. Oh, by the way, you know who's on the, on the Voice with me? I know who on the, I know who on the Voice with you, dog. Chicago's very Chicago's own. Chicago's very own. You meet anyone from my city, they gonna say that we cousins. Tell my cousin I said what's up next time you see him, okay? <laughs> Chance right. the rapper. Chance the He's rapper. He's an absolute beauty. What you call him? He's a beauty. A be I gotta start. I gotta incorporate that into my arsenal, <laughs> dog. He's a beauty. That is power. Holy moly. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I won the drive portion of this contest. But you are on one leg. Jesus. You are on one leg. Is that a joke? Bro, that's technology, that's science, bro. The, the engineers that we can't talk, that's science. Callaway, we need to talk about a few more yards. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, it, I'm confident that since you're so heavy on your left side, the short game gonna be a lot better. All right. Let's, let's, take, let's, let's take a walk. Let's, let's take a walk. Let's see what happens. But you know, D-Wade used to do that, you know, back in his day, used to fake like he was injured, show up somewhere and then just Score lay it on people. 60 points. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> that's what I felt like you was trying to set me up for right there. But I understand it wasn't fair, so on the chip segment, I'm gonna give you a little advantage. All right. How you feel about that? Well, it's, it's, if that's a pot bunker, yeah. it's not an advantage for anyone. <laughs> well, you know, being from Chicago, I've actually never seen one of these, so <laughs> I, think that, I think that this is an advantage for you, my boy. All right, <laughs> let's get in there then and see what we can get out. All right, look, let's just do Let's just, not saying this is in traditional drive, chip, and fuck format, but let's just do two shots, closest overall. How you feel about that? All right, let's do it. You want me to kick it off? Where are we going? We're going to go to this little bowl one right here. Oh, wow. How you okay. feel about that? Yeah, all right, let's do it. I'm going to kick it off. All right. Now, you think as far as I hit the ball that I ain't got no hands. Is that what you're thinking right now? You think I ain't got no short game? Potentially. Mm. But I'm not going to say anything. Thought you were smarter than that. Thought you were smarter curse than me that. here. Thought you were smarter than that. <laughs> you strike me as a very smart individual. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. I tried to. Go on, do it again. See, that's how nice of a guy you're dealing with. Y'all Give me it. all of that. Y'all could. And then <laughs> you did that. <laughs> I was watching it. No, I was watching some of the players yesterday. I see how they be kind of like sweeping under here to make that little spin thing happen. It's different out of this kind of bunker, I guess. Hold on, hold on. The wall scared me a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. Hold on. Look at that. Spin back. That might be perfect. That might be. That might be dangerous. That's decent. That might be dangerous. That's decent. Come on. I know we didn't quite clear up the terms of this bet, but I'm, I'm still gonna. At least while you're in Chicago, you gotta introduce me as, as your friend. Yeah. Okay, you have to say the word friend though when you introduce me. To my me. friend. Yeah, good where, friend. Where do you want me to introduce you on the street? <laughs> Everywhere you, every, every, every person that's worth meeting with me and you walking together, this is my good friend. Right, okay. okay. If I win. That's okay. <laughs> I'll do that. That's, that was. That is what they call naughty. Naughty, <laughs> naughty. Maybe you take me over there. You know what's so funny? I'd prefer your putt to mine. I I'd do miss too. that. I do too. <laughs> All right, we are we over this. We over this. Let's go to this putt, bro. A bunker shot, not really a good assessment of somebody's game anyway. You know what I mean? Like, that's a specialty <laughs> shot. And, you know, the way I hit the ball, I, pretty much, I stay out well, of you, bunkers. You want to go back to the range then? Yeah, yeah let's go back to the tee box. <laughs> let's go back to the tee box. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, where do you want to go? It's tied. 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. That, that was a sexy. Although, it's tight. That was a sexy bunker shot, though. Thank that you, was, sir. That was sexy. That was sexy. I'm spend Plenty of time in there to practice. I can tell. I can tell. So we just going to, you see this hole right here? Yep. Gotcha. How you feel about that? Closest to who's the winner. Whoa. Two and one. <sighs> We're at the Ryder Cup. It's all square going down the last. I don't need all these theatrics and dramatics, man. Don't put no more pressure on me. Dude. Listen, right. You know, if you I be giving it to me. If you introduce me as your friend, my life is gonna change, <laughs> dog. What you mean? This is a big deal for me, bro. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. I'm an awful putter. This is going <sighs> down the hill here. All right. Well, pay attention. Learn you something. I got a feeling. <laughs> I, I got a feeling that this is gonna curve a little bit. Yeah. Right to left. It goes out to the right and then uh, falls in, kind of on line with that ball at the back. You could read putts like that. I'm good at reading them. I just can't hit them. All right, all right. 
Come on, baby. You nervous? This could change your life right now. Hold on. <laughs> Get in my zone. This could change your life right here, dogs. Right there. Come on. That's a decent put. To oh be my God, that is so mediocre. That scares <sighs> me. That well, scares me how well, mediocre that is. If this goes is. wrong, we go again. Yeah? I need, we, need to go, we need to go again regardless. See? <laughs> different strokes for different folks. Go ahead, go He's ahead. He's got dog. different rules for himself. The speed kind of. The speed. Well, you, you haven't hit a putt on this green yet. I'll give you that. I need a revise, so watch this. Oh, wow. Go, go. We go again. Let's do it again. You want to give me another one? <laughs> yeah. OK, Raj. It's not as high as you think, actually. He gave you a second chance here. <clears throat> he gave you a second chance. Don't blow it. Don't blow it, son. Come on, Raj. Ah, oh, that's a good line. He likes it. Ooh, that's tasty. That's Actually, tasty. Rewind, we're not doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> that's tasty. Jeez, Rog. That's on. tasty. That is very tasty. It's only fair that we do two. I, gave you, I was going to give you two bunker shots, you know? <laughs> Didn't need it. I need this one, though. I guess today we find out how bad he really don't want to be my friend. We gotta take a peek we at that. We need to have a look at this one. Bro, you don't wanna be my friend that bad. <laughs> like, you were literally just, you like, it's this serious to you. Oh, you won. You beat me. Fair and square. Friend. 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 This is Roger, my friend, everyone. But... <laughs> wait, 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 your what friend? Um, my bestest friend? Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Carlsbad. That was. <laughs> He's toxic. He's toxic. <laughs> Hey, that was fun, dog. That was great. Thanks for having me. No, thanks for you, you know, kicking off season two with me, dog, and, and more importantly, being a great friend. <laughs> Thank you, best friend. I just check, I just checked my calendar, and it's just wide open for all of your <laughs> tour dates as it should turn out. Is it so that not, crazy? So not just Chicago? Bro, I can be at every single one of them. That's crazy. That's crazy, dog. You might need to have a look at a new job then. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Thanks very much, pal. Yeah. appreciate it. Good I'll luck talk for everything. to you, man. See you soon. There you have it. Range Talk Season 2 is officially off to the races, and your boy making new friends already. I mean, I love everything now doing for the music game, for the game of golf. Crazy proud that he a part of Team Callaway. You know what I mean? However, I am hoping that he realizes how versatile of a talent I am. Find some room for me on the roster. You know what I mean? Roger Steele, the golf influencer, songwriter, extraordinaire, and friend of Nile Horn. Best friend at that. Got a nice little ring to it. 